Hello, I'm Leda Sarı, a PhD student at UIUC. And today I'm going to talk about the work that was done when I was an intern at Mitsubishi Electric Research Laboratories. The title of our talk is Unsupervised Speaker Adaptation Using Attention-Based Speaker Memory for End-to-End -end ASR. This is a joint work with Nikomaris, Takaki Hori, and Jonathan Nero. As we all know, mismatching speaker characteristics reduces ASR accuracy. Especially at test time, we often encounter unseen speakers with various characteristics that increases the word error rate. To mitigate this problem, several speaker adaptation techniques have been proposed. The aim of speaker adaptation is to adjust an ASR model to make it more robust to speaker variation. In this work, our goal is to introduce an adaptation method for end-to-end -end ASR that is applicable in unsupervised settings, that provides fast adaptation, that is useful for streaming applications, and that is robust to internal speaker changes. Although there is a strong recent interest in end-to-end -end ASR, there are not many adaptation techniques for these methods. Some of these approaches are appending speaker eye vectors to the inputs, using speaker transformed features, or using speaker adversarial training. However, these methods have several shortcomings. Some of them are utterance level approaches, and therefore they cannot handle internal speaker changes. Some of them are applied only to the input layer and therefore they are not flexible enough. Some of them require speaker levels and therefore they are supervised approaches. In this work, we propose a method by building a memory consisting of a set of speaker embeddings, for example, I vectors from training data and use this memory to extract an embedding, which we call M vector for unseen speakers at each frame. Once we compute these M vectors, we append these M vectors to the neural net activations at hidden layers. This method is inspired by the neural trink machine, which was proposed in 2014 by Graves et al. We especially use the memory reading operation to determine instantaneous speaker embeddings. There are several advantages of the proposed method. First, it is unsupervised during test time. It doesn't require any test speaker label information. It's a frame level approach, which allows us to adapt faster, which makes it useful for streaming applications and which makes it robust to internal speaker changes. The neural Turing machine interpretation allows us a direction for a writing mechanism, which is a subject of feature research. The method is also flexible in that different embeddings can be used in the memory, for example, I vectors, X vectors, and so on. It can be used in different architectures. For example, it can be used in DNN HMM hybrid, or as in our case, joint CTC and attention model. Now let's look at joint CTC and attention and to end ASR. This model is a combination of two sequence-to-sequence -sequence approaches to mitigate their individual disadvantages. As shown in this figure, it consists of an encoder, an attention mechanism, a decoder, and a CTC component. There are two losses associated with this model, the CTC and attention loss, both of which try to maximize the log likelihood of the labels given the input features. And the model training is performed using a multitask objective, which is a way to sum of the individual losses as shown in the equation at the bottom. Here is the architecture for the neural Turing machine. It consists of a controller, a memory, and a read and a write head. The controller controls the input output as well as the heads, and the read head reads from the memory and write head writes to the memory. In this work, we focus on the read operation. So let's look at the read operation more closely. The read head produces a query vector QT and takes the dot product between this vector with the memory items and then computes attention weights to determine a weighted sum of the memory items to get the read vector denoted by RT. Before moving into our proposed method, let's also look at one of our baseline methods, 
which is adaptation with eye vectors. First, we start with joint CTC and attention model. The encoder usually consists of several BLSDM layers, and the input layer takes some acoustic features. In the case of adaptation with eye vectors, we take the speaker eye vector, repeat it for all frames, and append it to the input features. However, this method is not limited to this case. We could have split the network into two parts and adapt the intermediate activations. To adapt these activations, we can take the speaker eye vector again, repeat it for each frame, and then append it to the intermediate activations. In our work, we replace the I vectors with M vectors, which are computed at frame level using the read operation of the neural Turing machine. Now, let's look at the proposed method in detail. For a frame, we generate the output the activation from the first part of the encoder, denoted by HD, and then take a projection of it to generate our query vector QT. Then we apply scale dot product between this query vector and each of the memory items to determine attention weights over the memory items. Then we take a weighted sum of the memory items to get the read vector. In our case, the memory consists of speaker or utterance I vectors computed on the training data. Therefore, the read vector, which we call M vector, is a linear combination of the training I vectors. Once we get this M vector, we, call, we concatenate it to the activations from the first part of the encoder and then project it before feeding it to the second part of the encoder. As you know, the attention, decoder, and CTC components remain the same during this process. We perform the experiments using the ESPNet toolkit on two datasets, WSJ and Tedlium2. Our encoder was BLSDM based, the decoder was LSDM based, and we used location based attention in the middle. We have two baselines. One is the unadapted baseline, which is the default ESP net recipe. And the second one is the adapted baseline, which is appending I vectors to the hidden layers, as I described before. We perform different experiments. One is experiments on the location of the memory block. And the second one is experiments on the utterances with speaker change point. In all cases, we ran the system for four times with different seeds and reported the best results based on the dev set. Here is the word error rate as a function of the adaptation layer for Wall Street Journal. As you recall, we split the encoder into two parts, one with L layers and one with N minus L layers. Since our network has six encoder layers, the first part has L layers and the second part has six minus L layers as shown in the small figure on the right. Here we denote input features as layer zero. And in this graph, we show the word error rate versus the layer number. Here, the green line shows the no adaptation case. The orange curve shows the I vector baseline and the blue one is the proposed M vector method. As we see from this figure, input layer adaptation is not the optimal one. For M vectors, the second layer, and for I vectors, the third layer performs the best based on the death set results. If we look at the test set results, we see that for M vectors, we get 4.2% word error rate, and for the I vector case, we get 4.7% word error rate, which corresponds to 10.6% relative improvement in the word error rate. Here we show the results for the Tedlium set. Again, we start with the dev set performance. And once again, we observe that input feature adaptation is not the best one. For I vectors, the first layer, and for M vectors, the third layer performs the best. 
And for the test data set, we see that both I vector and M vectors perform similarly, and around 11% were the rate levels. Up to now, I told you about speaker I vectors during training and test time. This gives the I vector method a slight advantage because the, during test time, it assumes knowing the speaker labels. To remove this advantage, we also experimented with utterance level I vectors, and in this table, we show the results for both datasets. In the Wall Street Journal case, the utterance vectors perform similarly to the speaker I vectors. And for the Tedlium case, utterance level I vectors perform slightly worse than the speaker I vectors on the test data. Now, if we compare the utterance level I vectors with M vectors, we see that M vectors perform better on the test set for, as compared to either the speaker I vectors or the utterance I vectors. As I mentioned before, I vectors are repeated for all frames in an utterance, whereas the M vectors are computed at frame level. This leads us to think that M vectors will be more robust to the speaker changes in an utterance. To test this hypothesis, we compared the speaker change performance of these two systems. We simulated the condition by removing silences at the boundaries and concatenating audio files from different speakers. In the next slide, I will denote these new test sets with star. Here are the results for both data sets. As expected, on speaker change files, we have higher word error rate in both I vector and M vector cases. However, the performance degradation is less severe for the M vector case. Indeed, for WSJ, we see 3% lower word error rate, and for TEDLIUM, we see 2 to 4% lower word error rate on the dev and test set, respectively. This shows that M vectors are more robust to speaker change. In summary, we introduced a neural Turing machine inspired unsupervised speaker adaptation method for end to end ASR. This is a frame level approach which is suitable for online adaptation. The M vector that we proposed is a frame level approach, and it's a, the M vectors are computed at a frame level as a pre, uh, weighted combination of the memory vectors. The weights are determined by the attention-based read mechanism. The M vectors perform similarly or slightly better than using Oracle I vectors based on the experiments on WSJ and Tellium corpora. We also show that M vectors are more robust to speaker changes within utterances than the I vectors. Thanks for listening to our presentation.